Today I'm going to be talking about circular sock knitting machines, or CSMs. Those of you who watch my channel know that I restored an antique CSM not too long ago, and I learned a lot about CSMs during that process. From there, I went on to start working on some 3D printable prototypes uh, of CSMs, and I'll be showing you some of what that was today. I actually made lots of different versions and sort of iterated on my design, and uh, I made some good progress there. But while I was doing that and sort of researching what types of CSMs are out there and trying to find out sort of what kind of a niche that I could sort of fill in this market, I realized there's a lot of different options and a lot of different directions I could go. So what I want to do with this video is I want to sort of show you the sorts of things that I've been uh, researching and sort of finding out about CSMs, talk about some of the different options, and in the description to this video, there will be a link to a poll that allows you to sort of vote on what's most important to you. And that'll be really helpful for me to decide what areas I want to research. And then I'll do some more researching on CSMs and decide whether it actually makes sense for me to design and make uh, a functional CSM. So here's one of the prototypes of a CSM that I 3D printed. And it's got uh, several things that I'll go into in a little bit more detail later on in this video. But uh, basically what I want to show you right now is sort of the fundamentals of CSM for those of you new to CSMs. Basically what every CSM has to do is it has to have a guide for the yarn to come in. And then the yarn goes from there onto hooks. And then the hooks will go down. And that's sort of where the stitch is, is formed. So what happens is as the stitch sort of goes down below this sort of top of the cylinder, uh, it pulls the yarn through a loop and then it comes back up and that forms a new loop. So if I turn the crank here, you can kind of see that it's just, what it's doing is it's making the uh, needles go up and down, up and down, and that's sort of the the primary purpose of a CSM. I mean, that's that's at a fundamental level, that's what it's doing. It's raising these hooks, putting some yarn on the hooks. The hooks go down, form a stitch, and that's pretty much what uh, sock knitting is, is all about. This is a Harmony knitting machine. This is actually donated to me by uh, Sarah Parson. Uh, she sent this to me as sort of a way for me to make more progress on understanding how these kinds of machines work. And I just wanted to give a huge thanks to Sarah for uh, sending this to me and uh, definitely putting it to good use. It's helping my understanding of how these machines work. And what I want to do now is sort of, I've already um, taken out the screws that hold the cylinder in place. And oh, that was just a needle that dropped, but um. Basically, the thing that I wanted to show you is these flippers and sort of this mechanism is called the, the cam. And the way a, a needle kind of goes through this system is it goes and then it goes down here and it hits this flipper and this flipper takes it up and then it hits the center portion of the cam. It gets pushed down and then it comes over here and it actually travels underneath this flipper over here like that and just sort of continues around on this neutral position. So what's happening, as I pointed out on my 3D printed machine, is the needle's uh, going up where it grabs the yarn, then it goes down where it forms the stitch, and then it goes to a neutral position. That's sort of the optimal motion for uh, the knitting needle. It's sort of the minimum movement that you need to form a stitch. And that's how most of these uh, commercial CSMs work. What I wanted to show you now though, was you if you were sort of watching my machine, you would have noticed that the needles went down twice. And I wanna take this one right here, sort of explain why. So here's the cam system from one of the ones that I've been working on. And it, you can see, has no flippers. So it's actually easier, uh, especially when 3D printing this kind of a device. It's nice from that perspective. However, where what what has to happen 
with these hooks is that the hook goes down and it doesn't actually form a stitch at this point. It actually is doing nothing sort of during this this point in time because there's no new yarn in the, uh, the hook. But it goes up at this point and this is sort of where it gathers um, the yarn and then it goes down and this is where it forms the stitch and then it comes up. So this extra downward motion is not necessary, but the reason it's there is because it allows the needle to go in both directions without having sort of a fancy cam system with flippers or some other moving parts. It's just sort of this stationary uh, piece that allows it to go in either direction. It's sort of a simpler design, but the uh, one of the limitations is that it adds an extra downward stroke on the yarn, which makes it a little more difficult to crank these systems. Uh, there's going to be more friction, that sort of thing. Uh, I still haven't like really tuned in my system, so I'm not sure like what the final downsides of this are going to be, but I can see like theoretically there are some downsides from this uh, compared to a flipper system like this, which allows, you know, the needle can go either direction. It always goes up and then down and then sort of levels out by going underneath the flipper. And if it goes this way, it goes up and then down and then it goes under this flipper. So uh, there's just less movement of the needles with this kind of a system. I also got some other systems that I don't have actual working machines for. So I'll talk about them while looking at uh, pictures for them. So I didn't have a picture for this, but this is called a pyramid style cam system. It actually works very similar to the flipper system I just showed you, but um, there's a little lever on the outside of these systems and you can raise and lower sort of this little piece here. Uh, so this one is lowered and this one is raised. So as the needle uh, goes around, it would go up here and then down. And then on here, because this one's not up, it would just sort of go back to a neutral position. So this has sort of that minimum number of movements as well, where it's got the one up and then a down and then a, a neutral. So you're, you know, you're loading the, the hook with thread or yarn and then you're making the stitch here and then it's back to neutral. So this is um, an interesting system. You do have to toggle the switches. Uh, when you change directions, which you do for things like heels and, and things. So um, this has a little bit more work. Um, some people seem to prefer this style. Some people seem to prefer the flipper style. So this is a, a Gerhardt CSM. This is a popular one that's still for sale today. And they have a cam system that's very similar to the uh, antique cam system that I showed you uh, previously where it's got two flippers and um, part of the cam here pushes the needles down. Uh, the difference here is primarily that these flippers are spring-loaded so that they kind of click and so this uh, system is a little bit louder but it um, has fewer um, jams and um, needles going the wrong way. So it's uh, I don't know, some people like this and some people don't because it makes more noise. But anyways, my, my point is that um, even like modern CSMs use techniques that are very similar to antique ones. Um, so with those cam discussions out of the way, I wanted to talk about sort of the core components of the system when I get it down to sort of the minimum level of complexity and sort of talk about another big difference. Uh, between sort of these prototypes I've been making for 3D printers and sort of a more commercial one like this. Now, uh, with my design, sort of the core of the unit is you have this gear uh, that uh, allows you to crank it in um, either direction in a circular motion. Then you have sort of this main base and you have a cylinder. And that's really all there is to it. However, if you look at sort of the more commercial one, here's its cylinder, and then it's got um, sort of this piece right here. This is sort of a central cam piece, and that's, that's something that mine doesn't actually have. 
I'll explain why it's necessary in a little bit. Uh, it's got the uh, gear down here, and then it's sort of got this base where all of the crank stuff goes, which mine would also have. I don't talk about that. But there's a, basically this, this is an extra piece. And the reason this piece exists on these systems is because they need sort of a place to attach a river. So for those of you not familiar with rivers, that's the uh an attachment that I, I don't have right here I, i've got one for this machine it's just not right here in my office but uh, basically it goes up and then it allows you to put some needles sort of here in a circular portion sort of like on top of these needles and it allows another kind of stitch that sort of creates that ribbed pattern in uh when you're knitting a sock so that ribbed pattern is, is kind of nice um, to have on socks. Not everybody uses ribbers, but a lot of people do. And if you want to have a ribber, you kind of need to have a place to mount it. And the only place to mount one on, like one of my 3D printed ones, would be on the cylinder. And that's, that's just not really practical. There's not really a good spot there to mount it. So that's why most of the uh, commercial... Uh, CSMs that I've looked at sort of have this slightly more complex design that has sort of this extra piece where you can mount the ripper. And that's one of the big discussions that, that I need to sort of figure out with these uh, style of uh, CSMs. And one of the questions that I want to understand, like, should I make a more complicated, slightly more expensive system that can accommodate a ripper, even if I don't necessarily release it right away? Like, um, I don't know, I, I guess I need some feedback on whether how important a river is. So that's going to be in my poll. Another big important topic that I'm going to be asking about in my poll is sort of what materials it should be made out of. So the, the, the obvious choices for me at this stage are uh, 3D printing, uh, pretty much everything that I can, which would be almost all of the parts. And then another one would be injection molding. So that's going to be a little bit better, more durable, smoother operating than 3D printed, but it can't be easily changed. And there's a lot of upfront cost for me. And another option is to make it out of metal. And initially I thought that was going to be too expensive and not interesting, but I actually looked into getting some quotes for a few of the parts that I needed and it wouldn't be as much more expensive as I had thought. I'll talk a little bit more about pricing and the pros and cons of these three different manufacturing techniques in the poll. So um, what I really need you to do at this point is go ahead and go look at the poll that's linked to in the description and sort of fill out um, what what you can from um, in that poll. That'll be super helpful for me to sort of direct the direction of my research, which will then, I'll, I'll be using that to decide whether it actually makes sense for me to make a CSM. But if I can figure out what people in my community actually want out of a CSM, then that'll let me sort of target all of my efforts into seeing if I can design a, a reasonable product. Thanks for watching.